Man, man, this content reveal got me hot and bothered. Jesus Christ, what the fuck? Hi, I'm Daniel. This expansion is bigger than I expected. That's what she said. Before we get into the meat and potatoes, here is my reaction to Path of Exile's 3.25 expansion, Settlers of Kolgur. So excited for the music. Rayclast is a cursed land. You'd have to be mad to settle here. And yet, welcome to King's March. It's not much yet, but with your help, we can erect the greatest city Rayclast has ever seen. Wow. We'll need resources. And savvy planning. It really is a Soon of Empire. we'll attract settlers. Craftsmen. Fortune seekers. Recombination. And of course, pirates. Sentinel. Wait, that's the. That's the boss from Heist. But if right? we prevail, our ships will be heavy with gold. Jesus Christ! We hope to achieve the impossible. Yeah, like how we did they hope achieve to this build in four months? A home. <gasps> Respect with gold, oh my. Or descendants. Gladiator reward. I, I said champion. Man, so massive melee rebalance. There it is. I knew it. I said ultimate, but I was both. Jesus Christ. Again, you know, four months. How? 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 <laughs> Now to get into the 30,000 word patch notes. Okay, I'm kidding. I'm gonna break it down a little bit so it's somewhat digestible. Starting off with the expansion itself. In Settlers of Kulgur, you can teleport to King's March from the first act onward, meet old and new NPCs, and build up the town one brick at a time with gold. Gold is now a new type of currency that you can find in the core drop pool. During most areas in the game, we can find a variety of ore. These little spots in the area involve different types of monsters and challenges. In the Q&A with Siggy D, Mark mentioned five types of ores, which can then ship to different parts of Rayclast or back to the Kulgur by hiring workers. Speaking of hiring, you can hire many workers for a variety of things in King's March. Like mining the ore, taking care of the fields by farming, runesmithing to enchant your weapons, and literally mapping. You can hire dudes to map for you. <laughs> Depending on the amount of workers that you hire, the task will be faster and also safer. For example, if you got all that sweet ore on a long trip back to the Kulgur over the dangerous sea, but you hired workers with a low shipment level, they might just die. <laughs> By the way, farming wheat is apparently the most straightforward way to get currency as a reward from a shipment. Just pin that in your brain somewhere. There are also three new boss fights in the expansion, which I will totally win first try with my lightning arrow build. For sure. 2.5k life is enough, right? One last major thing is the currency exchange. I think GGG has fixed trading. First off, now you can trade with other players through an NPC, while you do other stuff in the game. And second, because the NPC Faustus takes his small cut in gold for doing the trade for you, free-to-play players can also take advantage of it. So you don't need a premium stash tab, which costs real money, to trade currency not only faster than before, but also with less friction. It seems like a new age of trading is happening, which is amazing to see. Overall, the 3.25 expansion looks 
absolutely huge, not only because you can choose what you want to do, but also being able to min-max left and right over a long period of time. I'm excited to play around with the shipment and see what is the minimum amount of ore or stuff I have to put in to get a divine ore out. Will be interesting. Let's briefly talk about the highlights of the character balance section. First off, the champion got a rework, so make sure to check the new ascendancy notes before you plan your build. Second, rest in peace raider. Now we have the warden instead, inspired by the affliction ascendancy. This also brings back tinctures, so plan accordingly. Melee totems are gone. The new focus by GGG is on you, the player dealing the damage. Melee should be on average 75% stronger than before. There are many new base types during the endgame that are stronger than the ones before. So you can now get more armor, evasion and energy shield than before. Also modifiers like life can reach numbers like this now. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Any magic finders in chat? Well, probably not for long. No more quantity of items on anything. Don't worry, your standard character is safe, but unique items like Sadima's Touch and Venter's Gamble do not give quantity anymore. I personally think that's great, because first of all, it helps with performance, you know, not spamming the screen with items but also it helps with not having to pick up hundreds of small currency things, but just one divine orb once in a while. Okay, that was a lot. I didn't even talk about the skill gem changes, which I won't hear or else will never finish, but check the patch notes in the description down below if your skill got changed. Moving on to the end game. Starting off with the Nameless Seer, Sentinels, the Wildwoods, and the Reflecting Mist they can now appear randomly in your maps. The Nameless Seer can offer uniques as always, but you can also scry maps, which switches the divination cards from one map of your choosing to the other. Sentinels can be picked up and activated like in the Sentinel League with F2, F3 and F4. Don't worry, you cannot take them out of the map and they are not itemized so use them when you find them for a slight boost in loot. The Wildwoods from Affliction League can be entered once again, without the NPCs. After gathering the Wisps and exiting, they randomly power up enemies in the map and boost their loot. The Reflective Mist can offer you two items that have their modifiers mirrored, like back in the Calandra League. It can also drop a Reflective Mist, an item that is tradable, so you can mirror an item later, but breaking the original item in the process. Going to be interesting how expensive that will be in trade. The King of the Mists is back by using a new item found in Rituals. If you haven't found him or tried him out during the Affliction League, I highly recommend you do that in 3.25. Speaking of a dangerous, scary looking guy, Simulacrum now has 15 waves and the Voices Cluster Jewel should be more common by beating bosses in it. We'll see how that turns out. Furthermore, we have new chisels to modify maps to drop specific items like scarabs, divination cards, currency and more. Hopefully they aren't super rare or else, you know, I'll just stick to the normal chisels. Tier 17 maps are nerfed. In a good way. If I remember correctly from the Q&A, monsters in it have around 55% less health and deal 30% less damage. A lot of changes again, so it will be interesting how the endgame actually feels during gameplay in 3.25. Last thing are quality of life changes, or additions, which are all amazing. Here are some highlights. Waypoints activate automatically if you walk by. Pickup range is increased. Static life bar for act and pinnacle bosses. Auras stay active after death. And divination cards are now visible through the atlas itself. So we don't need the wiki anymore and there's actually in-game info. Fuck yeah. <laughs> All of this, which already was a lot, was just a summary and my personal highlights. Let me know in the comments down below which build you are going to play in 3.25 Settlers of Kolgur, releasing on July 26th. If it's Righteous Fire again, I swear to God. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, subscribe. 
And don't forget to stay hydrated, gamers.